during a raid, anything could happen. This boy has been missing for seven months. The child has been taken, taken to, Delhi. to Delhi. This is quite a dangerous area. We have been attacked there two times. Where are the children? Those who think that slavery has been abolished, they are wrong. Abhi, sab log koi dar raha hai? Tum log dar raha ho? Daro nahi. I have seen corruption. Injured children with broken spirits. My colleagues and I have freed over 80,000 children. But that is not enough. Chup, chup. Hey. Rescue operations and raids are important, but one tiny part of the whole movement. I have one single mission of my life that every child should be free to be a child. Free to laugh and cry, free to go to school, free to touch the sky. I have seen that change is possible. If you see any kind of abuse and exploitation of any child anywhere, Break the silence. This year's Nobel Peace Prize has gone to Indian Kailash Satyarthi. We cannot end child labor unless we all demand it. March with me. March with me. Now I am joined by the wonderful and amazing Derek Donin. He is the director of the film, The Price of Free, that we talked with Kailash about. And I really just wanted to start by asking you how you came to know who Kailash was or the work that he was doing. Yeah, how did yeah. that, how did you become aware? First of all, thank you for, for, for talking with me. And, of course. And uh, shining a light on the movie and the issue. This is, uh, this is really special. Um, so I have been working with Davis Guggenheim uh, for a number of years. He's my mentor and, and a close friend. And he was making a movie called Hinemi Malala, mm -hmm. uh, um, in which Malala Yousafzai wins the, the Nobel Peace Prize. So he was shooting that movie. She won the same year that Kailash won in 2014. And he texted me from Oslo during the ceremony and said, I just met this amazing man, Kailash. I think we should make a movie about him. You know, no one really seems to be telling his story or giving him the platform that I think he deserves. And so, um, so I, I immediately started researching Kailash and his work. I hadn't really heard of him before. I, I sort of knew about the issue of child labor, but wasn't aware how pervasive it is. And the second I started reading, I was just moved that, and, and, and also stunned that this is, you know, something that we're not all talking about, we're not all thinking about, that his yeah. story isn't elevated to, to the level that I, I felt it deserved to be. And as a storyteller, I got excited about how the, the movie could come together. You know, a big part of what he does is go on these raids. He infiltrates these child trafficking networks and operations and risks his life to, to rescue children. He's rescued 85,000 kids. It's this amazing story. And I just got excited that that could be a big part of, of the movie, that it could feel like a thriller, and that the stories of the children um, would would really be the heart of the movie. You know, that that's yeah. who he spends his life with. And, and I... And I, I got excited about putting those two worlds up next to each other. Yeah, no, I 100% agree, especially the thought that, like, how are people not talking about yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. That was wild to me because, same as you, I knew that child labor was a thing, mean, right. meaning past tense. Right. I didn't realize that it still is the issue that it is today, and it's exactly. really important that we let people know. Yeah, when so you... So thank you for... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you read that it's 150 million kids who are deprived of their childhood deprived of an education and forced to work, mm -hmm. it kind of blows your mind. Yeah. Um, and that's one in 10 kids worldwide. And, that's um, crazy. You know, and it just makes me think about my own childhood and how lucky I was to yeah. have the freedom to go out and play and skateboard and play basketball and call my friends and do what I wanted to do and just have the freedom to be a kid. Yeah, know? and to go to school and complain about going to school. Exactly, to go to school. exactly. It's, it's, really, it's really important. I'm glad that you guys yeah. are shining a light on it. Yeah, so how long did you spend preparing for the film or how long were you in India filming this? Yeah, so we, sh we were there for about six months. 
That was spread out over the roughly two years that we were shooting. Wow. Um, the initial trip, once we went into production, the initial trip was basically a three month chunk of time that we spent uh, um, st you know, making the movie, shooting the movie. And um, uh, a big, you know, big part of that was a chunk, chunk spent with the children as they go through that, that journey to recovery. So after they've been rested, the movie starts with a raid. So big spoiler, we, <laughs> we start the movie with this, this thrilling and exciting raid and rescue operation and then spend the rest of the movie with the kids who we see get rescued as they go through that, that recovery process. And we see them broken and, mm -hmm. and disheartened and, and distrustful of adults and, and each other. And um, they, they really come out of their shell and, and learn how to love, how to, how to receive love, how to talk to each other, how to play, um, and the, the importance of that education. And so I spent about, it was about three weeks to a month really just living with them at, at the ashram, wow. um, which was really just a beautiful experience. Um, and then another big part of it was, was that, um, that undercover investigation, which actually, this is a crazy story, but that wasn't resolved by the time we premiered the movie at Sundance. You're kidding. So uh, as you saw, there's this little scene at the end of the movie, I which I don't want to spoil. Uh, but that actually happened after Sundance. So we premiered the movie. I was on vacation and Kailash called me and was like, this thing just happened. And we had to keep shooting because that's, that's the nature of documentaries. I, right? Life keeps happening. So anyway. so That's, that's wild, though, yeah, because yeah. I wondered, because as someone who edits, not that I'm making anything yeah, close yeah, to what you're no, making, but, but I was like, I wonder if that was added in later because yeah. it, it came through later. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it changed the whole, the whole ending of the movie. I mean, the whole, I, I think it's a much, you know, we wanted the movie to be inspiring. We wanted it to be uplifting. It's a tough subject, yes, but my hope is that you'll walk away feeling inspired and, and motivated and, and encouraged and, and feeling good. You know, yeah. that there's tough stuff in there, but I think you walk away feeling good and, and really moved by this amazing man and, and the journey that these kids have been on. And now that we have this new ending, which is uh, really exciting and, mm -hmm. and happy, um, it, it really, I think, leaves you uh, feeling good at the end of the movie. No, I agree. It, it, it is, it's very inspiring. It's, it's hard and it's uncomfortable, but I think it should be. Yeah. Because out of discomfort yeah. comes, comes change. Right. So just as someone who films things and edits things. Yeah, yeah. How much footage were you dealing with? I know that's a weird question, but I'm like. Yeah, it's hard to answer um, in like terms of hours. hours. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. I really don't know. Um, how many hard drives are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's, our hard drive is massive. <laughs> sure. it, is, it is like a 12 terabyte hard drive. Holy so, uh, so it's a beast. Um, uh, you know, what I can tell you is it was about, yeah, about six months of shooting and, um, uh, there's we, we, we throughout production we were wondering how we were ever going to get it down into an hour and a half because the story is incredibly complex, yeah. incredibly nuanced. There's so many pieces to these individual stories. You know, and for, for me, like the, I like exploring these themes. We talk a lot about the issue in this conversation and mm -hmm. in a lot of the conversation surrounding the movie. We talk about the issue, but for me, it was important to tell. Uh, a story about people to, to make a yeah. film about people so we're exploring these big themes we're exploring this larger issue but it's always through the lens of these personal stories and how did you select because when we were speaking with Kailash we know that there's millions and millions of children who are affected how did you pick which ones to follow because I'm assuming there were more than the ones that yeah. we saw yeah yeah right? yeah of course um, that's that's something that just sort of happens organically in the edit, at least with the kids who are going through the recovery, because we really did shoot with so many of them. And, and there are so many amazing kids and, 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 and really, you know, emotional stories. Um, but, you know, part of what we have to decide is um, how the, the characters, and, and I use the word character uh, loosely because there are characters in the movie, but mm -hmm. how the kids interact with each other on screen or how their stories uh, complement each other. Yeah. Um, and so that's a big consideration. And um, uh, then when it came to finding the, the you know, the, the family who was um, searching for their child, there were several stories that, that we started following and Kailash and his team ended up you know, continuing that investigation and going on those raids. This is the one that I think really epitomized the challenge of Kailash's work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the amount of twists and turns that it took to, to try and find this boy. 
um, the, the, I, the fact that we actually were able to infiltrate this network yeah. uh, gave us the access into the factory. So we were able to put hidden cameras on the activists, which was really important to see what, to actually see what's happening in these factories. Well, to, yeah, and before they potentially come in, if they hear you're coming and like move things around or change things, to be able to see exactly. what's, what's actually happening. And that's a big kids. part of their reconnaissance. They have to be able to plan their raid. They have to go in and know where the exits are going to be. They mm -hmm. have to know what they're dealing with, how many adults are in there, are they armed? Yeah. You know, what kind of uh, situation are the kids in? How dangerous is it for them? They need to know all of these things before they plan a raid. So that's part of their work. They, they go in and they, they see these children. They, they actually can't rescue them in that moment. They have to go back and do a real raid with police. Um, so we were able to put cameras on and, and actually see inside the factories before the raid happened, uh, which was really important. And, um, and then there's the complexity of the, you know, the family situation, which I think, mm -hmm. you know, understanding that nuance, understanding what the families go through and how they get duped into sending their children away. So, so many people ask, you know, how could a parent send their kids to, into yeah. slavery? But, you know, but what it's you not see, like that. It's exactly. Not... What you see in the movie is that they're, they're tricked, they're duped. And mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of what we're looking for, all those different layers that, you know, again, we want to tell these stories. We want, to, we want to explore these themes, this issue in a very personal way. So we needed to find stories that would reflect um, the different nuances in, in that larger story. Yeah. And I, you did a great job with the, the following of these boys, this one group of boys, while weaving in more information about mm. that kind of stuff as your fault. You have to watch the film. I can't tell you enough. Um, also, like, bring a box of tissues. I definitely cried um, and still could get tearful just thinking about it. But I think you did a great job of weaving in extra information as we're still following this this one group yeah. of children. Yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's... it's. Uh, I, I think as you watch, especially for us, I, you know, we're not living this issue every day like Kailash is. Mm -hmm. Or when you're in Delhi, when you're in India, you, you see it. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it is all around you. And here it's much more buried in the shadows. So we needed to provide a little bit of context along the way, I think, for everybody to really understand what it is we're talking about, you know, outside of the scope of the individual children or families that we're featuring in the movie, what does it look like on a massive scale? You know, yeah. how is it affecting us personally? You know, it's a, it's a $90 billion a year industry, the, the trafficking of, of children. Um, and so I think understanding the, the sort of big picture was important uh, yeah. in seeding some of that information a little bit along the way. Just the sheer amount of children and money and the brands that are involved. I mean, right. it, like it blows your mind. Right, right. Were you ever scared? I mean, um, you're kind of in a not. It's not directly. It felt very dangerous to me. Like I said, yeah. it's, a, it's a thriller. Yeah. And I definitely felt that. Yeah, yeah. People ask a lot. You know, were you scared on the raids? Did you ever feel unsafe? You know, any, you see this in the movie. Kailash has been attacked numerous times. He's mm -hmm. had two of his colleagues murdered doing this work. Uh, and actually, just three weeks before we started shooting, one of the main characters, Arshad, one of the activists who goes undercover, he was kidnapped uh, by by a, a, a factory owner just three weeks before we got there to start shooting. And that's why he and was always worried they might recognize him. Exactly, yeah. And he still went and out. He still does it. And he doesn't tell his wife, he doesn't tell his that's kids the, the dangers of what he's doing because he knows that they'll just be so worried. Yeah. And um, But he doesn't want to stop, obviously. So, exactly. You know, he thinks about if this was my own kids, this, these are my own children, I, I would, you yeah, know, he'd move turn heaven and earth to, to, yeah. to rescue them. and. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the threats are still very much alive, uh, but, you know, you just kind of have to block the, all of that out when you're doing your job and trust the team and trust the, the safety protocols that they have in place, communicate, and know that at the end of the day, we're doing this b because there are children who are endangered and, and, and in a much more precarious position than we are or we ever yeah. have been, you know, and, and that's sort of the, the end game and, and why we do it, why Kailash does it week in and week out. And, um, and then there's just the technical side of like when I'm shooting, I'm not, you know, I have to be so focused on my job. Yeah, you're I'm like not there. On, you're... Exactly. I'm, I'm, I, it, camera almost feels like a shark cage around me, uh -huh. you know, yeah. um, because it's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the exposure and the, and the focus and making sure I'm in the right place at the right time. And in fact, having cameras in these dangerous situations can help because I think people that mm. see cameras might be less inclined to incite violence knowing yeah. that they're being filmed and that that can be used as evidence later. True. Um, so in some ways it, it can work both ways, but in some ways it, it actually can 
diffuse the situation, I think. Yeah, interesting. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Yeah. They could think like, ooh, you know, not be on my best behavior because I don't think those people have best behavior, but sure. better than the worst. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. So coming out of the film, for me, my main question was, what can I do? Yeah. How can we stop this? Because yeah. Aside from donating, which you should all do now to, um, you know, the Kailash Foundation and what they're doing to change the laws and to end poverty, how do we know what products are yeah. ch child slave free? I mean, that seems like such a hard thing to For figure sure. out. For sure. It's really tough. And there are some resources that, you know, if you if you go online and, and start actually looking for, for brands that are ethical and that really... Uh, look into their supply chains, you will find many that do, that, that you can feel good about buying. But it is hard to know when you're in a department store which brands uh, you can trust and which ones you can't. Um, and as you mentioned, donating to, to Kailash's organization or others is great, but I also understand that a lot of people don't have yeah. the ability to donate and still want to be involved and still want to do something. And for me, you know, once you see the movie, I hope that you'll be moved to do whatever you can. And Kailash says, you know, just do your bit, whatever yes, that is. Yes, I love it's, that. It's, it can be as small as sharing the movie. It can be as small as telling people about the movie and about Kailash's work. Um, starting that conversation, being loud and vocal about this issue, talking about, uh, about it. If we do that collectively and we raise our voice collectively, we've seen the power of, of, of many to, to make change. And we know that brands and corporations will be forced to listen, will be forced to be more transparent about their supply chains. Governments will be forced to... Uh, uh, enforce laws that are already in place or write new ones to protect children. So I think just the power of speaking out is is can be profound. And, yes. and my hope is that this movie can really uh, drive that conversation in a, in a big, big way. Again, we've seen it with Blackfish. We've seen it with An Inconvenient Truth, The, the, the Cove. Um, the, the power that we have together uh, can be massive. Um, and then, you know, there's more. I mean, you, you can um, host a screening. You can... Um, uh, volunteer for whether it's Kailash's organization or another human trafficking um, organization or sex trafficking organization in your city. Uh, there are many of them, and, and just a quick Google search, I'm sure, would would uh, show you um, organizations in in your community that that you could be involved with. Um, so you could write letters, you could reach out to your local politicians, you could ask them to. Um, to sign the, the international treaty that the U.S. is the only country not to sign to, that, that protects children. There are so many things you, you can do. And again, Kailash says, just do your bit. Whatever that is, however small, it, it will make a difference. So if people are wanting to find a list or any way to know if a company is ethical or not, because yeah. really I feel like that's the main way we can be empowered, uh, aside from giving and volunteering, is where we spend our money, make exactly. sure it's ethical. Vote with your dollars. Exactly. And we say in the movie, if a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. There's mm -hmm. probably a reason that those jeans are $8, um, yeah. you know, and uh, whether it's children or adults being exploited somewhere in the supply chain, we know that that happens and, and we can vote with our money. Um, that said, you know, there's an app called Good On You that's a pretty good resource. Uh, they... Um, they, you know, a lot of this is a gray area, so th there's only so much publicly available information, but they sort of uh, aggregate all of that information for each brand. So you can at least know, you can feel good or not about the stuff you're buying. And, and it's, I think, a good resource to at least have some idea going in as to which brands you can trust uh, more than others. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I think that's also part of the problem. Kailash says, you know, if we can label a piece of fruit organic, there's no reason we shouldn't be yeah. able to, to label our clothes or our, our, our goods um, that, uh, the same way. You know, yeah, this has be been ethical. made ethically yeah. uh, without exploiting children, without exploiting adults. And, um, and you know, so, so the more uh, awareness we have, again, the more we talk about it, I think the closer we can get to, to that kind of reality. Yeah, because I feel like if there's a way to know if my cosmetics are vegan or not, there's got to be a way to know if it's exactly. involved in some kind of child slavery or any per slavery in general of any people of any age exactly um, so yeah so check those out and also leave in the comments if you know of other apps or other resources or lists that can tell us will you let let us know in the comments down below also tweet it just because the more we know and the more we share in this the more we can do exactly um, and finally I'd like to know what's What's next for you? Yeah. Do you enjoy this documentary? Absolutely. Shining light on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Th this is this is my life right now. I've been making documentaries for ten years. I, I sort of aim to make 
films, whether it's documentary or, or fiction, but right now it's doc. I, I just, I want to make movies and, and, and content that makes people think a little bit more carefully about the world around them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and to tell human stories. That's, that's always sort of what I'm looking for is a compelling human story. When, when, as an audience member, what I look for is characters that I can relate to, that I can see a little bit of myself in. And, um, and I think it's, it's the way that I enjoy exploring some of these larger themes, again, is, is just by, by telling that human story and making that personal connection with somebody. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I, I have uh, several projects in development, and, and I'm excited uh, right now to, to focus on getting this one out into the world. And then, um, you know, and, and hope that you all watch and enjoy and share the movie. And then uh, we'll, we'll shift our focus and, and find the next one. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me. Thank you for what you do. Um, and know that you can please watch the film. It's available via YouTube Originals. I believe Soul Pancake is the channel that will be hosting it, and it's yes. available November 27th. Yes. Check it out. Watch it. I know it can be hard at times to, to see it and to realize the true, the true underbelly of what's going mm. on um, in our world, but it's really important that we all are educated and aware and use our voices for good. So please share it. Please watch it. And thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah. And please enjoy the movie. Please share it and uh, and, and use your voice. It's, it's a powerful tool. Agreed. Thank you.